It's called North Carolina's Triangle. Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. It's really well known for the number of universities they have around here, including Chapel Hill, Duke, and NC State, and many, many more, as well as the scientific and medical research they do around here. Located in central North Carolina, it's less than two hours west of our current home base in Greenville and two hours east of Charlotte. Over 40,000 people moved here last year, and we have three days to figure out why. So cheers to finding some outdoor adventures and local favorites. Wow. You think after almost 41 years you'd know where your mouth was. <laughs> Shut the front door. <laughs> it's on your lip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It is America's fifth oldest amusement park. The Guinness World Record for the most number of beers on tap. Get in there. Yes. Oh! Nailed it. There's more? Yeah. So many options. Of the 1988 sports cult classic film, Bull Durham, Literally never heard of it. <laughs> she don't do sports. You ready for tomorrow? Let's go. On Duke's campus. This well is said to bring good grades to those students who drink from it. Okay, we just pulled up to Holly Point Campground and the registration office is closed. And we're here at 4.15. It says get here between 4.30 and 7.30. Should we wait? Do we go to our campsite? What campsite are we? Uh, 52. What do y'all think? I think we're just gonna go for it. That's yeah. 52. So I guess we gotta How turn, turn around. Way? Like a boss. Oh like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> All set up. A lot of campers here right now in March. I can only imagine that it's gonna get busier the warmer it gets, but you see the lake view right here. And plan is tonight, hang out, cook some food, catch a sunset, start a fire, and get after it tomorrow. Uh, and this is pretty cool. We got the little beach area that's like maybe a hundred yards to our campsite. They've got a bunch of tent sites right here on this little island that sticks out over the lake. And that, if you are a tent camper, is the money spot. Sun went down, it's getting uh, kind of windy out here, but we did just sit out here for about 30 minutes 
and watch like a Shakespearean drama between three cranes. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but what a cliffhanger. <laughs> She does it all, folks. Steak dinner and turns a wrench. <laughs> all right, you ready to do some exploring? Got the itinerary right here. All right, let's go. You may or may not know this about us, but we're not much of museum people. But today we do actually find ourselves at what some people call the Smithsonian of the South, the North Carolina Museum of Art. But we're actually here to kind of see one specific thing, which we'll show you here in a minute. The cool thing about the North Carolina Museum of Art is that it is not just an inside museum, it also has 164 acres of a sort of a nature museum that you can walk around in. So today we're doing outdoor activities and getting cultured all in one. This place has almost five miles of trails, paved and unpaved, so you can bike, hike, walk, bring your dog, all the fun stuff. And to make it even easier, they have a downloadable app that'll teach you more about all the art installations that you walk by. So we're gonna use their free app to get to our next destination. definitely belongs in the Shire. Yeah, where's Frodo at? <laughs> this is called Cloud Chamber for the Trees and Sky. It's an art installation by Chris Drury, and essentially it's just an oversized uh, camera obscura, which is where you have light that goes through a little pinhole and it creates like an image on the other side. That's so. pretty cool. All right, let's see what's inside, folks. Okay. All right, so they say to give your eyes a minute or two to adjust and you should see through this little pinhole thing, essentially a picture of what's outside. So, <laughs> uh, medieval technology in a new age art structure. <laughs> okay. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> That's so wild. It's the trees outside. All of that is coming through this little hole right here. black room <laughs> and somehow the outside is inside that's real weird it's even on the walls and not just the floor you see that right mm -hmm. now i'm not saying you should do drugs but if you found some good ones and sat in this room for a little while i bet you <laughs> have a pretty good time the light. Okay, a little trippy, but that's why we wanted to come see it. Uh, but I'd say well worth the short hike that we had to do to get to it. Yeah, you do have to go off of the paved trail for this, but it's like, what, like 0.3 maybe? Not far. Uh, but I would love to have this park in my neighborhood where you could just like walk, hike, bike, bring your dog, all of this stuff. Yeah, a lot of people out here enjoying this place. Is this even an art installation? Well, of course really it is. It's a sketchy platform. No, it's completely pointless, so therefore it must be art. <laughs> <laughs> is that horrible? Art. There it is. <laughs> I don't know about you, Victoria, but that looks like a booty to me. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
you're in deep contemplation about this particular piece of art, what do you think it means to you? I don't know, but it speaks to me. <laughs> Welcome to Raleigh, which is North Carolina's state capital and second largest city behind Charlotte. Yeah, it has about 500,000 people. Also, it seems like there are a lot of smart folks around here. It ranks number two in the most residents with PhDs in the nation. And for those of you that were falling asleep in your third grade history class and don't remember who Sir Walter Raleigh is, well, this city is named after him and we've got a little bit more of his history from our Outer Banks episode, which we'll link right here for you. Okay, sticking with a bit of a psychedelic theme here, uh, started with the cloud and tree chamber. Here we are at Pullen Park. Now Pullen Park, normally is not quite this weird. Yeah, this is all part of the Luminosity art installment and festival that they have going on right now. But it is interesting in its own right because it is America's fifth oldest amusement park, the 16th oldest in the entire world. It was formed in 1887. I believe this is generally considered a kid's park. I mean, it does have a really awesome carousel. You can buy $2 train rides, maybe rent a paddle boat. It's only a couple miles out of downtown Raleigh and it's free to get in. But we're here kind of for one specific reason, to come hang with Opie and Andy. In case you didn't know, Andy Griffith was actually born here in North Carolina, not Raleigh, but they have a matching statue in his hometown of Mount Airy. I think Neville's going to be upset with you because you didn't bring him with to meet one of his relatives. What do you think, he's going to smell him at me? <laughs> Two Raleigh adventures down so far today, zero dollars spent. I'd say we're winning, folks. To the rooftop. This place is freaking huge. This is really cool. True to Project RV form, we do a little bit of work for a little bit of a reward. So here we are at the Raleigh Beer Garden. Welcome to the 
food and drink portion of this video. So I chose Raleigh Beer Garden because it is actually won the Guinness World Record for the most number of beers on tap. So many beers. There are 397 to be exact, both local and international. Now, granted, we are here in the middle of the day on a Wednesday, but I can imagine just given the space that it probably gets really packed out on the weekend. For sure. And it's actually set up pretty cool. It has multiple levels. There's one bar that's dedicated to your wine and your liquor, and then they have a North Carolina local beer section, and then their international bar. I love how this game has cup holders. Yeah. <laughs> Three attempts. Oh. Oh. Get in there. Yeah. Oh. Nailed it. So many food options. This is either the perfect place for someone with FOMO or the worst place for Ooh. someone. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's more? Yeah. So many options. I think Victoria made a decision. I'm in heaven. So many french fries. Oh. <laughs> what did we just enter? This is in the food hall? Is that a bar? Yeah, Betty's Gin Bar. What? Oh. That's so weird. <laughs> Apparently, Raleigh has got a ton of food halls. So welcome to Morgan Street. And if you're looking for food, this might be a good place for you because they got a whole lot of options. We got hibachi, sushi, uh, bubble tea. A you bar. Got axe throwing, all sorts of stuff here. Gin bar. I ended up with one of my favorite form of carbs, french fries <laughs> in a Colombiano style. So it's got lots of guac and uh, chicharrones on it. Yeah, I went southern style with the uh, fried chicken sammy. Whew. Okay. Victoria has one last decision to make here at Morgan Hall. Macaroons or bubble tea? What do y'all think? Let us know below. She said, let me get one of everything. Uh, oh, I'm so excited about these. <laughs> Probably our last stop of the day and highly recommended in the downtown Raleigh area, the Raleigh Times Bar, which back in the day day was the Raleigh Times newspaper. It was in here from like the 1900s to like the 1920s. So they restored this bar to its 100 year old beauty and it is a cool place to check out. Cheers to a fun Raleigh day. in the knife. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously happy wife equals happy life, but that all starts with making sure that she gets breakfast. So we're here in Durham at this cool little spot that she picked uh, called Google Hop, and I definitely could be mispronouncing that, but it's a bakery, cafe, and beer garden. I ended up with the Eggs Goulash, which was branching out of it, but it is really, really good. I'm a simple man. Croissant, eggs, bacon, grillé, a little bit of fruit. Okay, I am officially stuffed onto the next adventure. It was definitely a great place to check out for pretty much any meal of the day, honestly.
today we're getting after it in Durham, which is home of Duke University. So if anyone knows where Coach K resides at, I'd be interested to know. So let me know in the comments below so I can go say what's up. Durham is the fourth most populous city in North Carolina. And like we mentioned, Raleigh had the second most PhD residents in the country. Well, Durham has the third. A lot of smart folks here, as we mentioned, in the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area. And Durham actually got kind of big as a city in the early 1900s because of the tobacco industry. Which is and was a big part of North Carolina's industry. Welcome to the hive, y'all. Burt's Bees headquarters is here in Durham. Unfortunately, it's like actual headquarters, so. They do real business here yeah. and do not do tours. So, yeah. just so you know. That's Burt's cabin, Burt's Bee Man. <laughs> Relocated from Maine. This complex is so big. We are at the American Tobacco Campus, which is in the American Tobacco District in Durham, North Carolina. Formerly the home of Lucky Strike cigarettes, in case you couldn't tell. Surprisingly though, the entire campus is uh, non-smoking, so. The irony of that. <laughs> From what we gather so far, a lot of businesses, apartments, shops, restaurants, and just kind of like an overall cool place to hang out. Another cool thing about the American Tobacco Campus is if you're a fan of the 1988 sports cult classic film, Bull Durham. Literally never heard of it. <laughs> she don't do sports. Uh, we're right here in front of the Durham Bulls Athletic Park. One of our goals while coming here was to go to a Durham Bulls game, but season actually starts tomorrow evening and we leave tomorrow afternoon, so. <laughs> you ready for tomorrow? Let's go! <laughs> I mean, look, even if you aren't a sports fan, who doesn't love coming out to a minor league baseball game and getting some beers and hot dogs? You know what I mean? Okay, I'm thinking that this right here is what 80 grand a year to go to school buys you, is one of the absolutely most beautiful campuses I've ever seen. It is gorgeous. turned out to be an absolutely beautiful day, so we figure while we're on this beautiful campus, we'll come see these beautiful gardens. We are at the Sarah P. Duke 
Gardens, which is 55 acres. And it's on Duke's campus, and it looks like you can find every plant or tree imaginable here. It is free to get in, but you do have to pay for parking, uh, but it looks like uh, there are a ton of people out here enjoying it. You know how that thing works? What time is it? 2.08. You got that? No, I think you're off a little bit. No, I don't know how this works because it's 2.40. <laughs> this is a pretty big place and we've been in search. Victoria wanted to see the butterfly garden. Well, we found it. Turns out. There's no butterflies right now. <laughs> cool. I do think we kind of lucked out on the timing that we're here because it is late March and everything is just starting to bloom. Welcome to the Japanese garden. gas station taco trucks. I'm half Mexican. What can I say? <laughs> Back at Falls Lake State Recreation Area, and the other day we failed at that whole sunset thing, but it is an absolutely gorgeous day, as we've mentioned already. So we decided we'd bring out our iRocker paddle boards and uh, try and redeem ourselves a little bit. It is absolutely gorgeous, like you said, but it is 64 degrees, so I don't know who's more correct in what we're wearing right now. But... You know, hey, that National Weather Service thermometer is somewhere in the shade. <laughs> I'm not in the shade. <laughs> Honestly, one of the reasons that I chose to stay here at Falls Lake Recreation Area was obviously one, its location to the three areas that we're trying to visit on this episode, but also because we had the potential to put our paddle boards in and weather was like shaky. So we feel really fortunate to be able to get to do this today. Yeah, we lucked out. I would be doing us at Project RV a little bit of a disservice if I didn't mention if you're looking at these paddle boards right here and you're like, man, those iRocker black fins are pretty dope. I might want to get me one of those. Well, make sure you use the affiliate link below because that helps us out. And while we're on the subject, why don't we talk about some Project RV paddleboard essentials? It's a pretty short list, but everything's pretty essential for us. Portable waterproof speaker, adult beverages, dry bag that you can put towels, cameras, phones, all that stuff. Make sure you lock that up, keep them nice and safe. Lots of carabiners for attaching yourself to others, to attaching things to the board for pretty much everything. I think we've mentioned this recently, but if you like to chill like we do, this anchor has been essential for us. <laughs> Y'all ready to put in some work, get some exercise? <laughs> These little curly cues turn into new little fern leaves. Like you can see the side leaves starting to come out on there. Another upside to staying at Falls Lake State Recreation Area is it's got part of the Mountain to Sea Trail. And if it's not obvious by the name, it's a trail that runs from the border from Tennessee and North Carolina in the mountains all the way to the Outer Banks. Now this includes 700 miles of trails and 500 miles of connecting roads. And the goal being that all of it be off-road trails 
and it's really impressive over the last 10 years they've averaged uh, about 15 miles added every year it is dog friendly and obviously i don't know if the dogs are going to be up for all 1100 plus miles of this no, trail but we do plan dogs. yeah on hitting parts of the trail in both the mountains in western north carolina here in central north carolina and when we hit the outer banks again to bring good grades to those students who drink from it, but I think it's just supposed to bring good luck to people in general, so. I can't remember the last time I drank out of a public water fountain. I know, especially post COVID, it does feel weird. Right? Our time in Chapel Hill is gonna be brief, but we had to come to America's oldest public university, which is the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This right here behind me is the old well, and you might recognize it because it is the main symbol of Chapel Hill. The well was actually built the day that the school was chartered in 1793. It's an absolutely beautiful campus, and obviously we're not here to, you know, hope for good grades, but we are here for well wishes. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Mm. definitely visit Franklin Street on like St. Patrick's Day or game days. It gets a tad bit rowdy. Yep, they throw down. <laughs> Being that we're running behind and trying to be efficient with time, we're gonna knock out a quick Project RV campground review. Boop. Falls Lake State Recreation Area was pretty affordable, only $30 a night, and they do have both RV and tent camping. Sites are of varying sizes. You'll have to check the website. They do get pretty big though. Definitely big rig friendly. Yes. We did only have 30 amp power, but in our case, as long as we don't have everything on all at the same time, that works just fine. It does have a water hookup, unfortunately, no sewer. But they do have a dump station. I don't know, I might be wrong about this, but we haven't seen a dumpster for trash, so you may have to bring your trash out with you. They have a bathhouse too if you're not self-contained. They also got beaches, a boat ramp, and a beautiful lake, doesn't hurt. And as we mentioned previously, the main reason that we chose this particular campground was its location to the Triangle area, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. We didn't have to drive more than 40 minutes to get anywhere. However, if you have a specific goal for where you're trying to see, there are definitely lots of campgrounds in the area. And RV parks. In an area as big as we're covering this week, the North Carolina Triangle, it's impossible to show you everything that there is to do, so choose your own adventure. You saw what adventures we chose. But hopefully we got you some good info, and if there's something we missed that you think people should see, let them know in the comments below. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Uh, we gotta go get these puppies packed up, hit the road, and uh, get back to work for the next couple of days, and then off to the next RV adventure, wherever that might be. So we'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Bye, y'all.